Hey, what's up guys? This is my ESC series of videos. I plan on doing three separate videos. This first one will be uh, replacing capacitors. The second one will be voltage regulators. And the third one is going to be the FETs or MOSFETs, wherever you want to call them. And as always, these three videos will go into my repairs playlist. If you look in the description below, you'll find a link to it where I have many other repairs for all kinds of different stuff. Now, as far as replacing capacitors, it's actually a very simple thing to do and very quick. Honestly, this video would only take me one minute to do. So instead, what I'm going to do is, uh, uh, well, this is Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. So it's going to be a very long video. If you do just want to know how to put new capacitors back on these ESCs, just fast forward towards the end of the video. So out of capacitors, we have these ceramic capacitors, which are these dark orange things. You also have tantalum capacitors, which are these yellow things. And then we have electrolytic capacitors, which are these tube-looking things that we solder onto the PDBs. The first step to actually putting a new capacitor on is actually finding the capacitor that you need. With these ceramic capacitors, this is a little bit more difficult because there's no writing on them, no codes, no nothing. With the tantalum capacitors, it's actually a lot easier. Uh, you might need a magnifying glass, but there's actually a code written on top of these. And then you can just do a Google search, and uh, you know, you you'll find out what that code means, and find out how many microfarads that capaci or capacitor is rated for. Very quickly, just in case you don't already know, uh, I'm just using 10 for this example, but this symbol is for micro, and the F is for farads. So this is 10 microfarads. Now our keyboards don't have this symbol, so what you will do uh, when you're searching for this stuff is just use a, a normal U. So 10 microfarads, UF. As far as purchasing capacitors, uh, well first let's talk about this. Uh, the two different ways of getting the capacitor is you can measure these out to find out exactly what size you need, because out of these two you can clearly see that these are smaller than these. So you can purchase it once you find out what size you need, or your other option is if you do have an ESC that is fried beyond repair, then that's just free capacitors right there. You can see from this one I've already taken one off of it to use on a different ESC. So this is the method that I highly recommend, because by the end of this video you're going to realize just how much of a pain in the ass it is to find out what size you need. But I'm going to teach you anyways because uh, I, this is something I never talked about, but everything we use uses capacitors. Uh, the ESCs, flight controllers, video transmitters, cameras, everything. So this is something that's worth knowing. Alright, now as far as measuring these to find out exactly what size you need, there's two different ways of doing this. You can either measure all of them together and do a bunch of math to figure out uh, you know, which what the rating is for each individual capacitor or you can remove it and measure it by itself and that way you can just avoid doing all the math. If you do want to measure these out first you have to know if they are in series or if they are in parallel. So I'm just going to put one of my leads on one of the uh, you know where the power wires go and then I'm just going to touch this on the capacitor so I got this in the continuity mode you don't have to see my multimeter, just know if it beeps, there's continuity. So we get it there, 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 and all the way on, uh, all of these on this side, and all three on this side. It doesn't matter which side it is, the point I'm trying to make is, because it's beeping on all of these, we know that they're being run in parallel. Where if they were in series, let's just say I get continuity right here. It would, the electricity has to flow through this side to the other side of the capacitor and then come back out through this side and then it would go back in through one, out the other side, in through one, out the other side. So we would not get continuity on all of these. We would only get continu continuity on one of them. Now this ESC actually is run in series. So for example, I can get continuity right there, but I'm not going to get it on this side not going to get it right there or right there. So it's going in right there, then it's coming out the other side, and then I get continuity between these two, and then from this side back to the other thing. So series, parallel. If they are being run in parallel, you can take the uh, each individual capacitance. So for example, let's just say I have four 
10 microfarad capacitors. You would just add 10 plus 10 plus 10, blah, 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 until you, uh, you know, you're gonna get a total of 40 microfarads. So that's pretty simple. If they're run in series, then you get this crazy formula. So we have 10 microfarad capacitors in series. It's gonna be one divided by one divided by the capacitance plus one divided by the capacitance, so on and so on, which will give you a total of 2.5 microfarads. So we have four 10 microfarad capacitors both ways, but the total capacitance is completely different depending on if it's in series or parallel. Now I could go on and on and elaborate even more on this, but I'm not. Uh, the point of me telling you this is it's so much more simple just to remove it and measure them individually. So just do that. That's way more simple. And it's not only that, but also, uh, you know, even though these are in series, so we could take one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we got 11 capacitors. We would take the total capacitance and divide that by 11, and that would technically give you the uh, total capacitance for each individual capacitor, but you have even more stuff tied into it. So you don't know how much is tied into it unless you absolutely measure everything out and then divide everything. But then you have different size capacitors that's also tied in. And that, like I said, it is a huge pain in the ass. As far as measuring capacitors, you need a tool to measure capacitance. Uh, there's like three different ways of doing this. Some multimeters have that function that can measure capacitance. You also have, uh, this is also a multimeter, it's just in tweezer form for SMD devices. And then you also have, uh, well, something that, uh, this one can't do it, but one like this that can, it's pretty expensive. This is also very expensive, this is $300. They make uh, like a multimeter type thing that only measures capacitance and you can get them for like 15 bucks on Amazon and eBay. So all the tools, that I'm, I will be using throughout this video. Just look in the description and I'll leave you links to it if you are interested in picking yourself up some tools. Just know that you can get a cheap one for like 15 bucks. All right, now I'm gonna show you how to actually remove a capacitor and then measure it uh, individually. And whether you are buying new capacitors or if you were taking capacitors off of a damaged ESC, uh, either way you're covered. As I said before, everything I'm using is in the description below. Uh, first, I'm going to take some flux paste. I'm just going to squirt it. Wow, that's actually way too much. I was just about to say I'm going to squirt a little bit on it. You don't actually need that much. A little bit goes a long ways. I'll now take my hot air reworking station. Uh, it's too big to fit in the camera, but uh, you know the one I'm using came off of eBay. It's I want to say it's like 35 bucks. I've been using it forever. More than paid for itself. I actually made a separate video just for this tool because it is more than paid for itself. And I'm just going to heat this up, and these are actually ceramic tweezers, they're not metallic. Um, I do recommend ceramic because, obviously, if it were metallic, that would conduct electricity, and sometimes I use this on stuff that is being powered at that moment in time. What I'm doing is just kind of grabbing it every now and then, because sometimes you can see when the solder is liquefied, but sometimes you can't, so I'm just going to grab it every now and then. Eventually it's just going to come off. You don't want to pull it too hard because that's going to pull the trace off with it. And there it goes. I'm going to use some flux cleaner and remover to uh, get the flux off this thing because uh, my tweezers have a hard time measuring things if there is flux on it. A couple things to explain first. Uh, some of these devices that can measure capacitance, they sometimes have two different settings. This little symbol right here, this is for electrolytic capacitors, which is this guy. It also has a setting just for ceramic capacitors, which is just the C. The other thing I need to explain is with all SMD devices, things that we solder onto these PDBs, they, ha they all have a tolerance. So let's say a resistor, say uh, it's a, uh, a 270 ohm resistor. Well, resistors have a tolerance of, it's usually plus or minus 5% or plus or minus 10%. So it's not going to be exactly 270 ohms. It's going to be, you know, in the neighborhood, but not exact. So whenever we measure this, it's not going to be exact. And for this reason, this is it's just one more reason of why I recommend just removing a capacitor from uh, a damaged ESC. Because whatever you get on this, it could say 
10 microfarads, but it could actually be like 12 or 8 or something. For example, this is a 470 microfarad electrolytic capacitor. If I measure it, it's actually saying 445. So yeah, it's not exact. They all have a tolerance. So now I'm just going to grab this and see what this says. We're getting 8.6 microfarads. So now what you would do is go to eBay or whatever your preferred website is and uh, you know order some new capacitors. Uh, but like I said, keep in mind the tolerance is going to be off. So this 8 microfarad capacitor, it could actually be 8, could actually be 10 or 9 or 7 or anything like that. So your best pet is just to order a bunch of them in that, you know, in that neighborhood of sizes or take one off of a damaged DSC. So now you have your new capacitor, whichever way you decided to go. Time to put it back on. If you're reusing a capacitor, it already has solder on it and there's al already solder on the pads, so you don't need solder paste. If you're using a brand new capacitor, then I do recommend putting some solder paste on it. It's gonna be the same thing as, you know, your wire solder, it's just in a paste. And you just heat up solder paste and it turns into a solid uh, with enough temperature. Just like the flux paste, this stuff goes a long ways. So I actually just use a razor blade to get a little bit off the tip and then just wipe it on top of the pad. Now I, I am reusing this capacitor. It already has solder on it. I'm just showing you guys how to do it. And let's cover the other pad. And there we go, good enough. So I'm gonna to try to place this as center on the pad as possible. It's way easier doing this off camera because I'm normally like hovering right over it. That's good enough. With it in place, I'm just gonna heat it up with the uh, hot air reworking station. And you can actually see the solder paste turn into a solid. If it's not perfectly straight, you can take a razor blade and just kind of move it around and get it you know, perfectly aligned if you want. And that's good. Give a few seconds to cool off, let the solder turn back into a solid, and then give it a couple of taps, make sure it's not going to break off. And we are now done. So that is your capacitor replacement. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon.